okay, and one at large. And so, so now that doesn't even mean that anyone would be from the city of Jackson. Because when you say two from Hines County, that would mean that they would probably be appointed by the Board of Supervisors, which they could be from anywhere in Hines County. That's correct. And Jackson could have no representation on the governing body of the airport that it bought, built, and put into operation over since 1928. Because it's not just one airport, it's two now. Two airports, yes, sir. It's two, it's a system. There's a package deal here. So... So the city of Jackson is looking at a situation where we could have no representation um, on something that we built literally from the ground up to an economic powerhouse that puts in almost $900 million into the state's economy through people and through freight. Yes, sir. And that's what we are looking at here. We're looking at several different uh, angles to this. Uh, and, and pieces, um, and I'm glad that I, well, you know, I feel confident that we have the right structure in place to push against this, um, because from my standpoint, um, we have been working with the Mississippi Municipal League to show them that if the state is successful at taking the Jacksons Airport, well, what do you think they're going to do to Biloxi and Gulfport and Greenville and, and, and all these other places that also have airports? Because once you do it once, do you think that you're going to not do it again? You're going to keep doing it. So we're embedding this conversation not just as a Jackson conversation. So we will fight as a Jackson conversation. But we're also going to work from a, a, a city government conversation to push from that angle. So we have to be multidimensional in how we fight. In, in warfare, you just don't charge ahead from the front. You charge from the bottom, the top, the sides. Yeah. From the inside of their organization out, you know. So um, well, I'm glad I I'm glad I have you because I'm an old fullback. <laughs> and old fullbacks just got a charge. You go straight ahead. So thank you, it really had a little military science to it, yeah. um, so that we're more effective um, in our pursuits and we don't waste any resources. Because another strategy that's being used against the city of Jackson is let's attack them from all angles. We're going to try to take the airport. We're going to try to take over the water system, the sewer system. We're going to try to do a Byron Clinton corridor that's going to cut off, you know, <laughs> traffic through the whole city of Jackson. We're going to come from, we're going to try to take over the, the radio system. We're going to try to take over the 911 emergency system. We're going to try to do all these things at the same time to confuse us. But also another tactic that happens in Jackson is they, and they, bring, they keep up a lot of infighting. And, dis and divisive activity that divides people. And uh, when we can realize that we are in this together, both black and white, Democrat and Republican, this is our tax base. Yes, sir. This is our city's assets. And I believe that this is the issue that's going to further unite Jackson um, along common purpose. Because, you know, that's why you hear all this stuff, all, especially here at 90.1, you hear all these divisive conversations and you hear in the community, you know, you hear people talking you know, negative about folks, or whether it be about me or the mayor or just different decisions that we're making to keep up that divisive conversation going so that we're so busy trying to put out the brush fire or the small fire that we lose the inferno that we're trying to fight on the other side. And um, so that's why I'm glad you're here to, to let the people know that, yes, all problems are important, but sometimes there are some greater fights that we must align with folks that we may be arguing with over here. We, it may be a, a, a little, little division between, a little lower level division between one community or another community inside the city of Jackson. But y together, we have some greater threats that are more important than, you know, I want to put, I want this zoning issue or this, this, uh, this property or that property or the, this business being allowed to do this or this crime issue. There are some issues, and as you prioritize them, um, that should unite us all versus divide us all because we have to fight together to maintain our city. So um, talk a little more about what are some of the hurdles that you may see um, this going through? 
This meaning the uh, proposed mm -hmm. legislation. Correct. Yeah. And so uh, I also think that um, you know there's the whole issue of you know getting a change you know through uh, and passed you know by the approved by the uh, by the FAA, mm -hmm. the Federal Aviation Administration. Mm -hmm. And so um, the legislation may be passed, but you know this is still something you know that the FAA has to approve. Correct. And um, they will probably want to stay out of the middle of a local. Um, mm -hmm. Battle, correct. And um, I mean that's going to be a hurdle, you know, to get get something like that approved and passed. Probably the biggest thing, you know, that is a hurdle is the fact that, my goodness, Councilman, things are running well right now. <laughs> I mean, things are really running well, and uh, the oh, board, shake the apple cart. Yeah, the board of commissioners um, and the staff are doing a great job of running this facility. I, as I mentioned before, I mean, we are really, really poised to uh, take off and bring uh, what is already a great airport system, move it to the next level, mm -hmm. and uh, be something that uh, people, the people of Jackson and the region mm -hmm. will really, really, really be proud of. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you again, you know, three years from now, five years from now, as good as our airport system is <coughs> today, it's going to be a whole lot better. And so... Folks ought to think twice about upsetting, uh, you know, something like that that is poison ready to go. You know, I, I, you know, the position I've had, you know, since the beginning when they first came to me with this, you know, a year and a half ago, uh, was why don't you just work with us? Why don't you just work with us? It's not like we're asking you for anything. We're not asking the state for money for the airport. We're not asking for anything. We just say well, there's some folks who want to control everything. If they don't want to be a part of it, they can't control it. And they can't get all the resources for themselves. So what, I, what I've said then and said, and will continue to say, we'll work with any level of government or any um, neighboring government entity in an equitable way right. based on contribution. But to say that you want to have uh, some governance to something you never invested in, to say that you want to have a, a controlling interest in something that you have not spent one dime since 1928 to build, uh, just because it's in your neighborhood, they say, well, it's in our community, so we should have some say-so. Well, well, we tried that. Um, there's another issue that you may not be familiar with, but the, um, the city's under a EPA consent decree for our wastewater system. And when it came time to say, well, okay, who wants to be listed in this EPA consent decree and take responsibility for fixing it? Nobody wants to be at the table then. When, it, when the accountability came in, none, none of these other surrounding places want to be in the, in the listed. So the city of Jackson had to take total responsibility of it. But now they want to build their own system or, or, or take over our system that they didn't build. And so, you know, some of these overtures are, are disingenuous to me. And, um, and if someone genuinely wants to work together, I've, I've worked with the governor on several issues. I've worked with the lieutenant governor on several issues, and we oppose different issues, you know, tactfully and respectfully. Yes, sir. And we'll continue to do that. This, this, this is one issue. This is not something we're going to burn the capital down over. You know, this is one issue. And we will, we, we're just on different sides of the fence on this issue. There are other issues that we're aligned on. When it comes to agriculture, the governor and I are pretty much lockstep when it comes to agriculture. Um, so on this issue, we're going we're gonna to do what we need to do in the different levels we need to do it in to be effective and, and productive in our fight. I know I've kept you more than your 15 minutes you decided to be here. I know the people want to call in. So um, so you have any part <coughs> things you want to say? To the people before we let you out of here, I just I just part with what I said just a little bit earlier, and mm -hmm. that is that uh, you know the the Jackson Municipal Airport uh, system mm -hmm. um, is in great position. Uh, the people of Jackson and the region, mm -hmm. you know, should be proud of you know what we have you know at this point in time. Again, we've laid the foundation over the last year to really take off and run uh, with this ball, and and as good as the airport system is today. As good as financial position as is in today, three years from now, five years from now, it's going to be something that people 
will be extremely proud of. And uh, again, you know, this is an asset. These are assets that have a significant impact on uh, the region. And I would say, uh, Councilman, we start, you know, here with the region, uh, but it has a significant impact upon uh, the nation. And so folks ought to think twice about messing with <laughs> the way that it's running. Well, thanks a lot, and I really appreciate you for coming to the show, Mr. Newman. My pleasure. Thank you for having us on board. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. And I know callers, y'all been calling in. Y'all can go ahead and call in now. I didn't want to, uh, I wanted everyone to get a clear understanding of what was going on, and I mean, it took a little time to do that. Yes, sir. And I wanted to kind of lay the groundwork so you can just not hear it from me, but hear it from the man who's actually, from the man who's actually running the airport and, uh, and the facts. So that they'll, so that you can know what's going on. The news doesn't give you the opportunity to know um, because they only have a few seconds to give a story, and and, you, and this is not something that you can explain in in, in 45 seconds uh, on the six o'clock news or the ten o'clock news. So y'all can call in and ask any questions or comments y'all may have at this point. The, the phone number is uh, 601-948-5950. That's six zero one nine four eight. 5950, you can call in with your questions or comments. At this point, we got about 15 minutes left in the show. And uh, uh, our co host, Ms. Karen Nelson, has showed up. How you doing, Karen? I'm doing great. How you doing today, Council? So, what do you think about that airport conversation? Now, now that we can, get, we can roll our sleeves back. And talk. Oh, no, I, I, I must admit, you're going to have to fill me in a little bit <laughs> on, on, well, on. Well, you know, this airport situation is, is something that has been going on for a while, but now to see the way that it's being rolled out. Um, by the people who want to do this. It, 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 it's quite interesting. And uh, let's catch this call. Hello, caller. Welcome to the show. Yes, I'd like to weigh in on your questions. Ahead, I'd like to know what are the y'all doing to bring more competitive flights back to Jackson? Mm -hmm. okay. You know, uh, like Southwest left, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of uh, different things. Where people have to drive away to New Orleans to get cheaper flights almost out of Jackson. Okay, well, I appreciate it, brother. Okay. Right. But that Southwest decision, um, Southwest Airlines left Mississippi. Yeah, it wasn't just a, a Jackson issue. Um, Jackson is lodged between um, two major airports. You have Memphis and you have New Orleans. And if you have a higher demand for flights in Memphis and New Orleans, well, you divert those resources uh, to those different areas. Uh, to manage that demand uh, so that you don't have to buy a whole new fleet of airplanes <coughs> to service it here in Jackson. So we are working with several, I want to, I want to explain the Southwest situation, but the Airport um, Commission and leadership are working aggressively with several other folks to come into Jackson to pick up that market, that uh, those cheaper, that discount rate market of, uh, uh, that folks like to fly in. I know I, I like to fly Southwest too. Um, but that's a very big decision, so you have to make sure you've done your due diligence, and that company has the uh, has the capacity to deliver what they say because it destabilizes the whole operation. Because once you go into an agreement with another airline, that's a long-term agreement that you're in. So uh, we're working through uh, several scenarios, and that's just not a, one that you just switch. Like I'm, I'm, I'm deciding to go. I'm not going to Burger King. I'm going to McDonald's. You know, it's not a, a quick decision. So I want you know and feel confident that we are working through um, several different um, uh, possibilities of different carriers. Let me catch this next caller. Hello, caller. Welcome to the show. What's your question or comment? Hello? Turn your turn your radio down, please, call. Okay. Okay. I just got one quick question. Yes, ma'am. Um. The property that the airport is located on is owned by the city. Does the city have to pay taxes to Rankin County, or is um, that property exempt from taxes? Right, we don't we don't pay taxes to Rankin County. Just like um, uh, any, from other municipalities, we own the property and uh, we don't pay taxes to them. But they also receive great benefit by us putting. Um, the investment that we've made, you know, over a, over a billion dollars into this airport over the last over several years, they receive a great financial impact because there's an airport in their city or in their county 
Right, and, and, and they have yeah. hotels and restaurants and all those things. None of that stuff would be there to that degree if the airport wasn't there. Yeah. So we may not pay taxes in your city, but we bring a lot of tax base to your yeah, area. Exactly. Let me catch this next caller. Does that answer your question, sister? I understand. If you do, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Okay, and so, hello, caller. Hello. Welcome to the show. Turn your radio down, caller. How are you doing today, Cal? Hey, sir, how are you doing? <laughs> All right, this is I. Oh, okay, what's going on? I want to say this to your listeners, everybody. Elections have absolute uh, consequences. And what's happening now, the boldness of the governor and, and the people who really don't care about Jackson is a direct result of us not going to the polls in the numbers in which we should. They now are on the verge of one person away from having a super majority. And when you're in such a power, powerful position, these are the things that you do. And I can't really say for, for the people in Jackson that care about Jackson that go to the polls, I feel sorry for you. But for these low-down, dirty, sorry black folks who sit on their tails on election day and do nothing, I don't feel sorry for you. Because this is, it, this is not just the white folks making this. Some of the callers are going to say the white folks made this. Well, black folks made this by sitting at home and doing nothing on election day. So if you're sitting at home trying to bring the white folks, white man with a child, for this, this, that, and other, look at your neighbor and your friend and yourself and say, I did this when I didn't go to the polls. You know what else, counts? I'm going to bring this up over to Costco and we're trying to get Costco. You know, the, the, the zoning board meeting, <clears throat> when the zoning board met, you know, they voted it down. But the ironic thing about it, it was a docket that voted against it, and, that abstained. And that was Councilman, former Councilman Bo Brown. And I'm so very glad that Tony Yaba did that and kicked his tail off the road. Because see, with the election have consequences, people, and we need to put people in places. How in the world are you going to... Spain on a vote to rezone that area to get Costco in there, Bo Brown. So, councilman, you keep doing what you're doing because what you just did is didn't take off. I appreciate the fact that you did it because I didn't have all the information. Man, y'all fight that fight. Do what you got to do. And if, you, and if you can't do it, man, at least you try. Let me ask you this real quick. Are they going to have to use every that domain to try to take over the airport? Well, um... I, I, I don't know if they thought this thing all the way through, but um, there's several things. We own the property. That's the biggest issue. We own the property. So you can change the government, but, but we own the property. So if you take away the, the, the governing body or you change the governing body, they still have to come to the Jackson City Council every year. Even though we don't put money in, we approve the money that they, that they do use. So, uh, so that governing body, just like this governing body does, has to come to the city of Jackson every year. Uh, during budget time to account for their expenditures and then we are, we have to vote to approve it so I don't know what this new legislation will look like and um, but you know that's the process that's presently in place and we'll move forward on that. I, I just thought that they would not work with us when it came to Costco because it was state land and we had an agreement not to, not to allow for commercial use but when it comes to city land Oh, we're going to take that over. Mm -hmm. and, and, you think you think yeah, I got you. Yeah, I got you. Let me, let, me make a few, let me make a few more comments, but thanks for calling us. Oh, yeah. And I do want to comment on, 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 on something that, that was just said about um, the Costco vote. There was also some issues there um, um, when it came to what was presented. Because, you know, normally when developers come to the city of Jackson, they want to do something, they, they'll they call around to each council person and they'll call around the folks and we'll see like a model and they'll have it all laid out and you'll see this rendering or drawing of the proposed development and what's going on and, and all those types of things. Well, that all those things were presented um, in the zoning meeting um, with, or to the zoning board. So, you know, that caused some destabilization in, in, in making the move uh, from from several members, you know, yes and no, uh, and abstain. You know, so 
the the normal thing that goes on and also normally when developers come the actual developer or representative of the developer will come and talk about these things and <coughs> even when the measure was appealed to the city council we never saw a developer come to talk specifically we never saw a, a actual letter of in of intent or something in writing from Costco so that caused some of that uneasiness about rezoning you know 50 acres of land um, that's on Lakeland Drive uh, for for that um, there are different sides that inflame the issue but when you just as a voting person you know I can't speak for everybody who votes I just speak for me I look at the paper and I read it through and through and if I feel like something's missing I'll ask for more information and when it came to the city council because it got voted down at the planning board it came to the city council um, I was a president at the time I, I tabled it to the next meeting I think I, I think I tabled it or I asked for some more time because there was not enough information um, I wanted to see well, what it's gonna look like on how much was our investment because normally when you rezone something it's tied to a series of decisions it's not just the rezoning and you get a Costco you also have a contribution agreement of saying the city's going to commit to this amount of uh, infrastructure improvements uh, there might be what's called a TIF a tax increment financing plan where we agree to borrow money against future revenue from Costco to pay for present day uh, infrastructure costs so I don't want folks to think that the vote that the planning board took is the reason why Costco wasn't there the normal package wasn't presented either in the normal way that is normally presented for every other thing that we do so they're asking you to, to right. uh, approve certain monies for something that they don't even have a set right right it, 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 they were asking us to pr approve the zoning piece which would change the land use but normally you have in front of you some other pieces of information that it's all tied to and you make one decision because you can't make these decisions independent of each other let me catch this call hello caller welcome to the show yeah, how you doing? Hey. A quick question. Yeah. When a, <coughs> by law, state law, if a person abstains, does that abstention go with the majority vote? Uh, yes. You say yes? Yes. Okay. Now, I want to make sure I was right on that. Right. So when Mo Brown, Mo Brown abstained on Costco, the majority said no to Costco, and he said no to Costco. I know what you're trying to do, Council, but let's face it. That for me is needs needs Oh, we Costco. do. And, and check this out. We're probably going to still end up with the Costco. Um, with all this being said and all these other things, we're, you know, there's a good chance that, you know, because we're still the hub of everything. Let me catch the next caller, Eyes. Hello, caller. Welcome to the show. Uh, Council, I want to ask you something. You know, on Tom joined the morning show, they got a button hit called Hidden Racism. As long as Dirk was running the airport, you never heard nothing about this. As long as people that look like you and I is now running the airport, the CEO, and most of the board, now there's a problem. This governor we got, we need to go down there on the day that he's inaugurated a protest over the flag and everything else that he's trying to do to destroy the city of Jackson because it got more people like you and I that's in control. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, it. it. And, you know, I, do, I definitely appreciate everyone's sentiments. We got a lot of work to do on this issue and many more. The legislative session is kicking off. We got two minutes left to show. I want to say that the <coughs> legislative session is about to kick off next week. Um, be engaged because we'll be asking you to come help us champion. Because I don't believe in just hiring a lobbyist to go fight my battle. No, I'm going to go down there myself and I'm going to bring a whole bunch of folks with me and I'm going to articulate our position on these issues so that nothing gets missed because it's the legislative session of the state of Mississippi is too important to just leave it to the legislators. I want to go there and support these brothers and sisters that we send up there and help us move forward. Let me catch one more caller. Hello caller, we got one minute left to go on the show. What's your question or comment? Yes, uh, I noticed that you said you wanted to move the conversation above the racial black and white issue. Yes. Can well, because it's it's bigger than it's, the, the airport contributes almost nine hundred million dollars a year to the state's economy, and uh, it's an asset that is now running in a 
positive cash flow. The city of Jackson doesn't even have to contribute money to the airport anymore because it's making enough money to stay uh, solvent. So that's why it's more than just a black-white issue. It's a, it's a money and power issue uh, above that. So that's why I'm saying we have to do, it's, it's a, it's a black-white issue, it's several issues, but the biggest portion of it is the money-power issue. And we have to elevate the conversation to include the money-power conversation. So as always, everybody, I want to say we got a lot of stuff going on in the city. Uh, please pay attention to your city council meetings. Talk to your council people, the mayor. Uh, we'll try to keep talking to you. Uh, but remember, at the end of the day, we're all in this thing together. So no, don't never, never let anyone put you in a position where you don't love your own people. Because when you hate your own people, you're part of the very oppression that we're trying to lift ourselves out of. I love you, I love you Jackson. So make sure you participate in different events. Uh, participate in Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa has been great this year. So... Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next week. <coughs> Let's wait some food. Yeah, I, I'm gonna start before I got. Mm -hmm. You know what, Monty? I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's right down the hallway. You gonna plug that thing? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah.